Hey coffee lovers, have you ever opened a new bag of coffee, excited to try it out, only to see your shot run slower than a freeway at peak hour? This results in an espresso which is ashy and dry in flavour. Nothing like the flavour notes listed on the bag. The answer is in your grind adjustments. So let's dive in so you can confidently adjust your grind and pull consistently great shots of espresso on your machine at home. When it comes to adjusting your grind, there is one simple analogy you need to understand. Picture a jar of rocks and a jar of sand. The rocks in the jar fit together loosely, stacking up with large gaps in between. If you were to take some water and tip it into this jar, the water will find its way down through these gaps and make its way to the bottom. Now, imagine if this jar was filled with sand. The sand is a lot smaller, so the particles of sand fit together nicely and the gaps between them are a lot smaller. If you were to take some water and tip it into the jar now, the water would slowly absorb down through the sand and maybe eventually it would find its way to the bottom. So now let's take this analogy back to your espresso machine. Your portafilter basket is the jar and the coffee grounds are either the rocks or the sand or they're the perfect grind size where things flow just right. So how are we to know where the perfect grind size is for a coffee? Unfortunately, there's no way to know this information without pulling a shot and seeing for yourself. Even with the same coffee, as it ages, you'll notice that you probably need to adjust your grind finer in order to get the same flow rate. So the best thing for us to do is just pull a shot of your new coffee and see how it's flowing. So let's do that. Note that if your grinder has some of your previous bag of coffee still in the bottom of the grinder, you won't have an accurate understanding of the grind size needed until you have only the new coffee falling through the burrs. So assuming you have just fresh coffee, we look at our shot and see how it runs. As we learned in the previous video of this series, a great starting point for your extraction time is between 26 and 32 seconds. If it's running faster than 26 seconds, you need to adjust your grind finer. Thinking back to the analogy, we currently have rocks in the portafilter filter and we need to make them more like sand to slow that flow rate down. If your shot runs slower than 32 seconds, you need to adjust your grind coarser. In this situation, we have the sand in the porta filter. We need to make it a bit more like the rocks to speed things up. Now here are some extra important bits of information that will help you troubleshoot your grind adjustments. Firstly, every grinder has a certain level of grind retention. So this refers to the ground coffee that it gets stuck in the grinder. It has already been ground, but it hasn't made its way through into the hopper or into the porta filter. When you adjust the grind, you need to clear out this coffee at the old grind setting to get a true indication of the results of your grind adjustment. For home machines, it's probably best to grind out a few grams of coffee after making a grind adjustment so that you can see accurately how the grind adjustment has affected your flow rate. For our next hint, if you have a grinder which gives you an automatic dose, the amount of coffee that is dosed will change when you adjust the grind setting. Most of these automatic doses just tell the grinder to run for a certain number of seconds. And when the burrs are adjusted finer, it's now harder for the coffee beans to flow through the burrs. This means that if the timer is left the same, you will now get less dose for the same amount of time. The opposite is true if you adjust the setting coarser. It's now easier for the coffee to fall through the burrs, so you'll get a larger dose if you keep it the same time. As I've mentioned previously, your dose plays a very important role for the speed of your extraction. If we think back to our analogy again, if there is more sand or less sand in the jar, this will have a big effect on how long it takes for the water to reach the bottom. Because of this, it's best to find a way to keep your dose consistent, especially when adjusting the grind. The most accurate way of doing this is to use scales. Get it? Way? Okay, sorry. But scales will make dialing in your grind settings so much easier. They're a worthwhile investment if you want to brew consistently great coffee at home. Lastly, I'd just say when you're adjusting your grind settings, make small adjustments at a time. On this grinder here, I just move it one notch at a time and this small change will create about a three or four second difference to the shot if I keep my dose consistent. If you make big adjustments to the grind, you'll be going back and forth trying to find the perfect setting for a coffee and you might even use most of your bag before you truly nail that shot. More expensive grinders make it easier to make micro adjustments to the grind setting and have better grind quality overall. So this means that if you're really trying to get the most out of your espresso machine, a quality grinder is really important. If the grinder you're using costs less than a quarter of your overall coffee setup, then it might be time to save some money and upgrade your grinder for better coffee at home. Now this was episode three of my Home Espresso Masterclass. If you're new to coffee at home, you might wanna start from the beginning, or if you're already following the series along, you're ready for the next episode, where we're going to learn how to texture silky milk for our milk espresso drinks. If you have any questions about grind adjustments, meet me in the comments below, and I'll be sure to help you out. Keep frothing.